Welcome, this is my fourth video on the FL Sun Q5 3D printer. So in my previous videos, I set it up. In the last video, I did my first print and it was with a nut and bolt that was on the SD card that came with the 3D printer. In this video, I'm going to attempt to download a 3D model and then slice it and print it on this printer. So if you find this video helpful, I'll put a link in the description below to this printer on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So the SD card that came with this printer has a version of Cura on it, and it's an older version and it's for Windows. So if you're on Mac or Windows, I would recommend downloading the latest version. So I'll go into my web browser, I'll type in Cura download, I'll click this first link here. I agree, it says download for free. I'll choose the Mac version, I'll hit download now, I'll allow it. So while that's downloading, I'm going to go onto Thingiverse. So Thingiverse is a site that has things to download and print for free. So the first thing I'm going to look for is a penguin. Looks like Ultimaker Cura is downloaded. I'll open that up and install it. So to install on the Mac, you just drag it towards the Applications folder and it will copy over. Okay, that should be ready to go. So now I can scroll down through here and find a penguin that I like. So I found this one in the past. I think I will download it. This is a basic penguin shape. So I'll just hit download all files. I'll hit allow. So that downloaded pretty quick. I'll close this. I'll go into my downloads folder. I'll open up the penguin.zip. So in here we have a JPEG of it. There. If I go up, we have an STL file. And the Mac allows you to do quick view, so I just hit space while I'm on that, and I can see what that looks like, and I can rotate it around. So that looks like it'd be a fun model to print. So I'll go into my Applications folder and open up Cura. It says this is an application downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? I'll hit Open. It says, welcome to Ultimaker Cura, get started. So we have the user agreement, I'll agree to that. That's talking about the changes in it, I'll hit next. It talks about data collected, I'll hit next. It's asking if I want to create an account, I'll say no for now, so I'll skip. It says add a printer, I'll add a non-networked printer. So on the left here, I'll look for FL Sun, and I'll choose the FL Sun QQS, although I have the 5S. And my printer name here, I have FL Sun, I'll just name it Q5. I'll hit next. So we see FL Sun Q5 up here. I'll hit this little arrow and I'll say manage printers and I'll click on this and click machine settings. So since this isn't the printer I selected, it's very similar. I'll change this here to 200 for each of these. I think the Z height is 200 on here, but I don't think it can print 200 towards the edges. I think it can in the center. The rest of this I think is correct. So I'll hit close. I'll hit close again. So here we have a view of our printer. I can scroll in and out with my touchpad or your mouse scroll wheel. If I hold down space and click, I can drag around this. Somehow it gets in this auto drag mode and I'm not sure how to get out. Okay, so I'll go up to file, open files. I'll allow it to open my documents folder and my downloads folder and my desktop. Lots of security on these systems now. So I'll go into my downloads and I'll find that penguin. I'll click on files and click on the STL file. I'll hit open. So now we have the penguin here on our build platform. And I'm still stuck in this zoom mode. So I can select the penguin and then I can choose on the left here, the second one down, this is the scaling. So right now it says XYZ, the Z is at 68 millimeters. I don't have a lot of filament, so I'm going to switch this to 20 millimeters. So this will be pretty small and I have uniform scaling on, so that will scale it the same on all dimensions. So now we have a tiny penguin, which for some reason I can't stop scaling. <laughs> okay, so up here I have generic PLA, which is what I'm using, but you could choose a different filament there. On this next screen, there are different settings here, I think this is the layer height, this is profile, I'm not completely sure. Like I said, I'm new to this, so I'm still learning myself. We have the infill is at 10%, and then there's gradual infill 
and that says it increases the amount of infill towards the top. So I'm going to leave this as the default. It'll be a good experiment. And this says support. So what this does is if you look at this penguin here, its wings are sticking out and the 3D printer can't print out in midair like that. So what it will do is it will add support, so it will add towers under those. So it will build that up and support the wings. And then when you're done, you use your clippers. It came with the little blue handled um, flush cut pliers. You cut off those supports. So I'll choose supports. And then we have adhesion. It says enable printing a brim or raft. This will add a flat area around or under your object, which is easy to cut off afterwards. So when I made my initial print, it was hard to peel off this platform. So what this will do is it will create like a flat surface of 3D printed material that will help me remove it, hopefully. And then I'll cut that off with the little clippers or an X-Acto knife. So those are the settings I'm going to use. I'll close this with the X. Hopefully I can figure out this zoom thing when I really get into this deeper. It seems to kind of shut itself off every once in a while. I know I've used it and it had the zoom issue and then other times it stopped. So now I'm ready to slice this. So what slicing will do is it will take this 3D model and it will turn it into layers that can be used by the 3D printer. So I'll hit slice down here. And it says this will take nine minutes. It will take one gram of filament or 0.28 meters. So I have a spool coming later this week. It's a 1000 gram or a one kilogram spool. So you could print a thousand of these it sounds like. That's quite a few. So I'll hit save to file. I'll save this on my desktop. And we, down here we see it says G-code, so I'm going to save this as G-code. And G-code can be read by the printer, so I'll hit save. I think that's saved. I'll minimize this and I'll see if it's on my desktop. Okay, it's asking if I want to allow notifications. I'll allow it for this program. That could be handy. And here we have the Penguin G-code. So I'm going to insert the SD card that came with the 3D printer. I'm going to drag the G-code onto that card. So here we see the FSSQ Penguin. I'm going to eject the card and I'll put it in the 3D printer. So now I'm going to switch over to the 3D printer so we can print this. Okay, so I've stuck the SD card in the printer. I'll turn it on. The screen has come up, so I'll hit preheat. I'll choose PLA. I'll hit back. I'll go to print. I'll go to page down. I'll choose the penguin file. I'll say confirm. Okay, so this should start printing once the extruder and the bed has heated up. So I'm going to do a time lapse on my GoPro and then we'll take a look at this when it's done. So it looks like it's printing something, but it's beeping a lot. So I'm not sure what the deal is. I'm just gonna let it go and I'll check it out when it's done. I did some investigating and it appears to be this extruder that's actually making the noise. So I may have some settings to adjust to make this stop. Okay, the part has finished. It's tiny. It seems to have printed okay. I think I need to adjust the retraction settings on the extruder to stop that sound. So I'm looking into that. So I may make another print, but for now I'm going to wait for this to cool down so I can take it off the platform. Okay, this is cooled down. I'll see if I can get this off. I just broke some of the support off. I guess I can throw that away. So I don't like what the scraper is doing to this plate, so I'll just see if I can pry it off. Yeah, I broke it. But there it is. It's tiny. So I'm going to play around with that retraction setting and see if I can print it again. To get this off, I'll probably put some alcohol on here and pull it off because that seemed to work last time. Okay, so I'm back on my computer. I'll open up this file. So the extension 3MF wasn't associated with anything, so I'll hit Choose Application. On this enable, I'll go to all applications and I'll scroll down to Ultimaker, well, let me alphabetical order, Ultimaker Cura. I'll hit open. So while that's opening, I found this little forum post here that said to change these settings. Okay, so in Cura, I'll hit open as project, open. So I'll go up here to FL Sun QS, I'll hit manage printers, 
I'll go to settings on the left here and I'll type in retraction and it says enable retraction and I'll enable down here where it says retraction speed, retract speed and prime speed and I'll check that with the browser. We have retraction speed, retract speed, prime speed. I'll hit close here. Then over here I'll click on this pencil in the upper right. I'll go to custom. In search I'll type retract. It should bring the settings up. Okay. So it looks like retract distance isn't selected. I'll double check and see if I have that enabled. Oh, I don't have that enabled. Okay, so I'll do that too. I'll hit close. So on that web page, it said retraction distance is eight millimeters, and then the speeds are 80 for the other three. So I'll change the distance here to eight and the speed to 80, okay? So I think this orange here means it doesn't like this number, but I think it will still use it. So I'll keep it in there. I'll close this, and I'm going to try printing this a little bigger too. So I'll go down here to scale. We had it at 20. I'll do this at 30. I'll go down here and slice it. I'll hit save to file. I'm not going to replace the previous version. I'll hit two here, so it's different. So now I'll minimize this. I put the SD card in. So I can take this and drag it over to the SD card. I'll eject it. And now I'll place this in the printer and I'll start printing it. Okay, it's about ready to start here. Okay, I stopped this. One thing I noticed was that the fan over here was not on, so I think there's a setting I need to mess with. So I'm going to look into that real quick. Okay, so I turned this back on. I'm just going to try it again, and maybe the fan will start. I don't know. I'll check it out. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but the fan is definitely not running, so that's something I need to figure out. The fan on this side is definitely running. Okay, so I checked it again, and it's running now, and I... Did some research and it looks like it doesn't turn the fan on for the first layer and then the second layer it turns it on a little bit more and I think by the fourth layer it turns it up all the way and that's probably to help the first layers adhere to the plate. So this was a false alarm it seems like it's working just fine. The extruder is also quieter than it was before too. This is definitely better than the sound it was making. Okay, looks like we have a successful print. Now I just have to figure out how to take it off without breaking it. So I'll let this cool down and I'll come back and try and remove it. Okay, this should have cooled off by now. I'll see if I can remove it. I got some of that broken off. I'm going to do the alcohol thing. Okay, so I got it off the build plate. Now I can remove these supports. It's a little bit difficult to tell where to cut here. This is a very small print though. So I'm being careful to try not to cut the feet off of this penguin. So this looks like a bit of a challenge here. And this is a tiny part, so it just makes it more difficult. But uh, from the top, I can barely tell where the feet are. I kind of can. On the bottom, I have a better outline. I'm going to try an X-Acto knife to cut this stuff.
So as you use the knife, you really want to make sure you're pushing away from yourself. Doing this, it could be real easy to stab myself. This is a tricky thing to hold. Well, I was prying trying to cut this and penguin lost a foot. So this would be a lot easier to do if this was larger. This is a tiny little piece. I did okay on the first foot. I had a little bit more to do there. But otherwise this turned out pretty good. I mean, you can't really see any difference. You know, it printed each of these arms, the sports coming up and then it joined it all together. And I think that looks really good. So I may try and cut this foot out and glue it back together. I'm going to do that off camera because it's kind of hard to work with this thing right next to my hand and I need to get my face right down into this. So I'll come back and show how this turned out if I can get this back together. Okay, I got that cleaned up a little bit more and I put the foot back on. I don't have the feet cut out perfectly, but I did the best I can. This is a tiny little model. I don't have much filament to work with right now, so otherwise I'd make it bigger. It would be a lot easier to cut this out and it would be a lot stronger, but it was good practice. I figured out that the extruder was making noise. I may still look into that a little bit more and look into any other settings I need to tweak on this. But otherwise, it looks pretty good. It's kind of hard to show close up, but I don't see any sagging or anything in this. It's pretty good detail. There was a little bit of stringiness under the wings, but I mean, it's very minimal. So print number two is done, or should I call it three because I printed one and failed and started over. So this is my third print, I guess, technically. So I did the code they gave me. I took something from Thingiverse and printed it out. So that gives you a lot of functionality right there. Ultimately, my goal is to be able to produce things, to, you know, design things and then print them out. So I'll be learning more about that and hopefully I'll share my progress with that. So in the meantime, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Also, if you have any suggestions, leave those in the comments too. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.